Hey everyone, it's Colin from Legalized Mischief Productions. Thank you for joining me and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be uh, going over just some hobby supplies, some tools of the trade. Uh, this is something that a few people have asked for in my Patreon Facebook group chat, uh, just to kind of go over, you know, different things I use, what I use them for. Um, and you know just different products outside of just you know paint and paint brushes uh, so i'm going over that today uh just kind of you know tools of the trade so um i think it's a cool topic i think it's it's something that um you know doesn't get talked about a whole lot uh, unless there's a specific um unless there's a specific question about a specific product so uh, i'm going to be doing an overview of uh, just kind of, you know, different stuff that I use. I don't know. I want to introduce such a broad topic. So uh, first things first, this is my uh, kind of modeling assembly little tote, little case here. I think this is a pencil case or an artist's, um, you know, pen case. And I like it because it, it has all my kind of assembly tools in it. If I'm going down to the game store or something and, and I'm just going to be doing some assembly, you know, I can just grab this um, and it has everything that I need in it for the most part. Um, so let me get some of this stuff out of the way first. Uh, first things first, obviously a hobby knife. I just use, you know, an X-Acto knife, uh, X-Acto blades, pretty standard. I like this one because it has a, kind of a soft rubber handle. So when I'm doing a lot of when I'm doing a lot of hobbying, it uh, it's better than the metal. Um, these are great. These are little hook nose tweezers, kind of pointy tweezers. Uh, these are great for doing tufts on basing and also just getting like little burrs and stuff off of models, um, stuff that you may have missed during cleanup or um, you know, if a hair gets somewhere, you can just grab it with the little, um, tweezers, get in some hard to reach places. Also when doing assembly for like little tiny fiddly bits, uh, I'll wrap the ends in tape and I'll use this to place, uh, stuff, especially if it's, if it's inside, uh, you know, under an arm or something like that. Um, also for like sponge chipping, you can tear off a little piece of foam and grab it in the tweezers and do your sponge chipping that way because uh, I have these big mitten hands and if I want to get some chipping done again in kind of a hard to reach place I'll use these little pointy angled tweezers uh, these are like six bucks or something you can find them on Amazon um, pin vise very very important for drilling barrels and pinning models in general um, I like this model because the back of it spins so I can rest, it rests against the hand and then the rest of the drill spins independently. So I'm not, I'm not taxing the palm of my hand. Um, this thing's great. It's again, five bucks, six bucks, maybe. Um, then I'll get to this, all this pinning stuff here in a second. Uh, then just a regular set of tweezers just for whatever, just random, <laughs> random applications. Whenever you might need a pair of tweezers, you never know. Um, that's a cleaning brush. You can leave that. Uh, I do have the Citadel Games Workshop brand um, mold line remover. I found that it is not terribly helpful on infantry models or models with small parts. Um, this thing is, is pretty burly. It's, it's a big tool and it, and it takes off a lot of plastic when you, when you use it. That being said, it is really, really, really good for terrain or large models or especially terrain. Um, this thing will just go through terrain like a hot knife through butter. I mean, this really, um, is fantastic for terrain. Usually when I'm scraping mold lines, I just use the back of the exacto blade and I'll just I'll just clean mold lines like that. It works really well. 
um, right up until I start wearing the skin off my fingers and then I know I've probably done enough assembly. Uh, I have three, actually three sets of cutters. Um, these are just standard like wire cutters that you can get from any hardware store. Um, these are for obviously like really tough applications. Um, usually like the big gates on Forge World Resin um, or something like that where I really need to just take chunks out. Um, or if I'm doing battle damage on a piece of terrain, plastic or something, I'll use these clippers. Um, these are not for just kind of general clipping off of sprues because it's just too inaccurate and it's just it tears at the plastic rather than really cutting it because they're not particularly sharp. Um, but for those, it's uh, really, really useful. So nice big set of tweezers or not tweezers, but uh, wire cutters for just kind of general rough purposes. Uh, and then I have a cheapo set. These are actually, if you can see, these are actually bent at the end, so I should probably get a new one. Um, but these are for, again, wider applications, uh, not using for uh, assembling models. These are for clipping terrain, clipping, um, you know, if I have to change bases on something and I need to cut up a bunch of bases, or um, if I'm doing like super sculpy sheets for uh, green stuff roller using that for basing this is what i'll use to kind of break that up uh, i'll do a tutorial on that at some point um this is these are what i'll use to break that up because they're just a little better control than the big wire cutters um but these are not again these are super cheap these are not good for uh, clipping parts off of sprues for clipping parts off of sprues I use these nippers, they're called nippers. Uh, these are from Tamiya, and these are fantastic. Um, these are super sharp. They have a flat, if you look at the back, they have a flat edge to them. You see how flush that is? These are the best. These are cost you about 20 bucks. You definitely pay for them. I probably need a new pair uh, soon. Oh. This, these are also the ones that I use for cutting pins when I'm doing pinning. Um, I'll use these cheapo ones because I don't want to cut metal with these. I want to save these just for resin and plastic, just for soft materials. Uh, if I'm cutting metal, I'll use these uh, cheaper ones because I don't want to. I don't want to affect this this blade at all. Uh, these these clippers here because you can see how how sharp and how flush those are. So that'll get you a nice cut. These you're definitely pay for, but it, it saves you a ton of time in assembly. You can clip closer to the model um, without getting without it tearing chunks out of the part that you want to keep. So highly, highly recommend getting a really solid set of clippers. And then this is from like the airbrush cleaning kit, but I actually use it for doing uh, weathering for, for when I'm using a chipping fluid. Uh, these two sides of this brush are really good for getting different effects. And when I do my chipping fluid video, I will, you'll see how this comes, how this comes in handy with this different like wide brush and then the uh, kind of pipe cleaner shape brush on this end. And this is just a, like an old like sculpting tool, dental tool type deal. Um, this is just here just in case. I don't know. It's in the box. Um, <laughs> you know, it's again, it's for, you know, chipping or if I need to move around stuff on texture or if I'm going through on the bases and, you know, pushing rocks and stuff into basing material, I'll use this. This is just a throwaway. You know, if I ever need to poke something, um, I'll use that. Drill bits, uh, we got kind of a mix. We got kind of a mix here. Uh, some of these are from the hardware store. So you see we have old, like these are used for pinning, uh, but they're the bigger parts. So I leave those in there. Some of these are from the hardware store. Some of these are from Amazon, um, just all different sizes. You never know 
kind of which size you're going to need for bigger gun barrels or um, you know just drilling whatever you need to drill so those are in here um, obviously they're all kind of like around an eighth of an inch these are the drill bits that I use for pinning this I ordered from Amazon uh, these are three quarter millimeter drill bits I don't know how that translates to standard but these are the ones that I use and when I am doing pinning I use uh, beading wire from the craft store from Michaels uh, this doesn't have a gauge on it it's just the kind of medium side they have basically like three different thicknesses they have a, a thin which is way too thin they have a thick which is not useful for pinning and then they kind of have this medium size um, and this stuff is great I use the kind of copper looking one um, you get 10 yards of this wire for I think like seven dollars um, and one of these will last you probably forever um, if they last me a couple years and I pin a couple hundred models a year a few hundred models a year so um, it's more wire than you'll ever need the trick is just finding the right uh, drill bit these drill bits I ordered like a dozen at once for I don't know ten bucks maybe maybe um, and they come from China of course but they break so I ordered a bunch at a time um, I still have it looks like five or six of them uh, but they will break when you're pinning it just happens because they're super super thin where the grooves are for pinning so order a bunch uh, once you find it just order a bunch of them get a bead of wire and you'll be set for pinning probably forever um, these larger pins are so these larger rods for pinning these and these kind of I guess I could probably take this out of these uh, sleeves here but these are from P3 and these are actually really helpful um, I use them for doing uh, larger things like Forge World Knights and uh, Titans so these the, the really thick brass rod I used for pinning uh, the Warhound Titan that I did last year um, I'll be doing another one uh, next year or the assembly at least so these I use uh, and the th cool thing about the p3 set the pinning set it will cost again seven or eight dollars um, is they come with the rod they come with like four or five of these rods and the drill bit for them so you don't have to guess you don't have to go buy that separately um, it's one kit and it comes with the drill bit so if you're going to be doing a big model like that I highly recommend the p3 set um, just because it's a one click it's a one click bundle type deal where you get the right drill bit you get the right rod and it works it works really well uh, recently I went out and bought um, drill bits for magnetizing um, and these again off Amazon from China these are really really good uh, because they have like the two millimeter and three millimeter bits and kind of everything in between so these I'll use for gun barrels or um, you know especially magnets because magnets are really actually sold in millimeters and drill bits are usually sold at least in this country drill bits are usually sold in um, standard so like an eighth inch drill bit is kind of close to two millimeters but not exactly so if you want to flush if you want to flush um, seat for your magnet then you want to get the right size drill bits this is 0.8 millimeters to three millimeters um, and it goes up basically 0.2 or 0.3 for each bit uh, this was I think five bucks at the most so this thing's really cool I'm glad that I picked these up um, because now I have pretty much you know all the drill bits I'll need I say that and then I'll probably end up ordering some um, as far as magnets go these are two millimeter by one millimeter magnets and you can't see them that well uh, these are really good for weapons and stuff like that or uh, hands that have you know space marine hands two millimeters a good size these are very small um, 
and I just get that. These are, again, these are rare earth magnets. Do not buy the magnets from your game store. They are ridiculously overpriced. Um, don't buy hobby packaged magnets in general. Like I know Army Painter sells magnet sets. Um, it's stupidly overpriced. It's one of those things that, um, you know, hobby companies get away with because people don't know better. Um, but they package like 20 magnets or 15 magnets in special packaging and say it's for miniatures and charge like $12 for, you know, 10 magnets or something. I ordered 200 of these two millimeter magnets for, I think $10, $12. Um, and again, off Amazon. So do not, do not buy hobby packaged magnets ever. Go on Amazon and order the right magnets. You can find them in any size. These are two millimeter by one millimeter. I think these are three millimeter by one millimeter. Uh, these are, looks like three millimeter by two millimeter. So these are for bigger, um, heavier weapons, um, you know, wings or something like that, that you want to keep off of a model for transport purposes. Um, I also have some kind of flatter disc magnets. These are like four millimeter by one millimeter. Um, these are really good for... I don't know, torsos, things like that. And then I have some super chonky, you know, these are massive. And these I used uh, for the Warhound Titan for, whoops, and that's what you don't want to do because <laughs> they'll snap in half if you just drop them into each other. These are really, really strong. Um, these I used for the Warhound Titan weapons. Um, and they work great, but this is obviously, you're going to need a different type of drill bit for these. You're going to need a die, which is a flat, which drills a flat circle. If you, if you're building a Warhound Titan, you want to know where to find those drill bits, just shoot me a message. Um, and so these kind of all nest in here. You can, you know, work out your own organizational kind of structure, all the pins and stuff go in the back. And then the stuff that I use, let me just get these drill bits over here. Uh, stuff that I use the most will go in the front, which is mostly just pinning the exacto. I don't use that very much. This goes on the side here. Oh, and these are something I've recently discovered. These are Q tips. And these are little pointy, kind of tapered Q tips. And these are perfect for cleaning out the nozzle on a Badger Patriot airbrush. Um, the nozzles on the Patriot, let me see if I have one, I probably do. Oh, nope, that's the brand new one. Ugh. Okay. This, this is my airbrush graveyard here. So they send you these cool boxes. Um, this is where I have replacement needles and then just parts from kind of decommissioned airbrushes. Uh, this is my Sotar 2020 that died, so I use it for parts. This is my 105 Extreme that I broke. I, there's a plastic sleeve in here that I cracked when I was cleaning it too aggressively. Um, so I keep that for parts. But the salient point here, let me save those is do I have an do I have a nozzle in here? I don't. Hmm. Okay, well that's the airbrush graveyard. So with that, when things go sideways, you can do something like this, which is my zombie airbrush, which has the air air nozzle part from the Sotar, the body from the 105 that was still good. And then these back parts and all the internal parts, the nozzle, the needle, everything are all from the Patriot Extreme. So this is working. I have a new Patriot Extreme that I need to break out, but I'm going to use that one until it gives up the ghost. Um, but these are really, really, really good for 
just getting in there and cleaning out the inside of the nozzle because it's not something like you can soak the nozzle on your airbrush, but paint, especially if you're doing paint, varnish, primer, those are sometimes they'll get a little piece stuck in there and it can really um, foul the, the flow of the paint out of the airbrush and cause a lot of problems. So one of the things that I'll do, I'll maybe do an airbrush cleaning video. There are a lot of airbrush cleaning videos out there, but um, these are fantastic for that one specific purpose. Uh, they're really hard to find. I've I just had happened to find one. There's a like a Gundam and model train shop in our town, um, and they had some of these, so I picked them up. I think you know eight bucks maybe. But these are great for that one specific purpose of cleaning those nozzles. So that's it for my kind of assembly box. Oops and my airbrush graveyard. Um, next we'll move on to kind of finishing or yeah, I guess it's kind of the finishing box or the, you know, after we've done, after we've done assembly. So this is just a, you know, four gold box and I have sandpaper in here for sanding models. Um, this is 1500 grit wet dry sandpaper. I get this at Home Depot. Um, this is basically feels like paper, but when you're doing plastic, I also have a uh, thousand grit. I have 800 grit and then a lot of 1500. I use mostly, see, this is all 800. 800 is really aggressive for models. Um, I'll use this mostly on resin, uh, especially like Forge, again, Forge World. Um, if there's a big gate or something and I need to get it flat, I'll put it on my hobby desk and I'll rub the part on the, on the sandpaper, but 800 is super aggressive for plastic. Um, a thousand grit is actually pretty aggressive for plastic as well. Um, I use mostly the 1500 grit, which just basically feels like paper, but it'll get, it'll almost look shiny when you're done you're almost polishing. Um, and this I'll use on like Space Marine shoulder pads after I've cleared the mold line, but I want it to have a smooth, I want it to have a smooth finish. I don't want to have um, that kind of line because the back of the X-Acto knife is flat or the mold line remover is flat. It has a flat edge and you're trimming a curved surface. So, you know, I'll just hold this up and just kind of roll the Space Marine pad on it and get those or helmets, you know, get that curve back into it um, without leaving kind of scratch marks, like if you use a more aggressive sandpaper. So 1500 grit and 1000 grit are my go-to. Um, this one's, you know, pretty well worn. This is almost like a polishing cloth at this point. So that's what I use for sandpaper. What else do we have in here? Uh, backup needles for my airbrush. I actually don't need all this packaging. One of the things I like about the Patriot is you can use the same body with different needles. I'm sure it's the same with a lot of airbrushes, but uh, so these are fine detail uh, needles. I use the super fine, which is a 0.15 millimeter. Um, these are the fine detail, which I think are 0.3 millimeter. So if I'm doing a lot of priming or if I'm doing uh, terrain or something, I'll switch out to the larger needle size. And that way I can really hose, I can really hose down um, the projects I'm working on. So more sandpaper, let's see those. So these are agitator beads for paints, for dropper bottle paints or non-dropper bottle paints. Um, I use these in all my scale 75 paints because they need it. Uh, they tend to separate. I don't put them in every paint that I own. It's not necessary. Um, but things like this Dorn yellow edge, this stuff you can just see right there, it's separated. Um, so I'll throw a couple beads in there. And uh, these I got from scale 75. You can get these. These are just stainless steel ball bearings, basically. You can get these online. Uh, scale 75 actually sells these at a really good price. So. Um, I just went ahead and added it to an order whenever I did that. Uh, this is plumber's tape. I use this for 
um, the fitting on my airbrush hose, and now it's you know here. Um, Milliput super fine white. I don't even know if this. I've had this forever. I don't even know if this stuff's any good anymore. It might be, it might be dried out. Yeah, that's pretty dry. That is pretty crispy. But I bet if I added some water and mixed these two together, they'd be just fine. This I don't use that much, um, hardly ever actually. But if I need to, um, if I need to, you know, do some texturing on terrain or or do some big some big bases, um, you know, you can use the Milliput. I just have it. I don't think it's, I don't even think it's any good anymore, but I'll find out the next time I like really need to use it. And then I'll find out that it's no good and you have to run to the store. Uh, I'll get to glue in a second. This stuff's great. This stuff I really like. This is Vallejo plastic putty. I use this for gap filling on models. Um, especially like, let's see here. Oh, I'll show you real quick. So like Space Green Eliminators, Primaris Eliminators, um, they have this seam that goes right down the cloak, uh, which is not, not ideal. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put some of this plastic putty on a base or something and I'll get my brush. I'll mix it with a little bit of water and I'll brush it into the crevices to kind of fill that in and then i'll come back with that 1500 grit sandpaper and might start out a little a little higher maybe i'll start with a thousand grit and i'm not doing a, a model prep yeah that's a thousand grit i'm not doing a model prep session right now but come in with a thousand grit and this stuff just sands right off and it on the flat so the thing I like about the plastic putty is on the flat surfaces it'll actually just slough right off and just leave it in the gaps and you can see there like especially on the shoulder it's just coming right off that way there aren't any weird lumps or anything um, it's not protruding from the surrounding area. Um, it's just kind of go against the grain down here. And it's, you know, you got to kind of work it a little bit because it is a really, really fine grain sandpaper. So we'll just work, work that seam a little bit. And I don't know if you can see that very well, but that bottom seam is really filled in nicely. Then we'll go back with the 1500 and kind of polish that off. And once that's primed, you won't even be able to tell uh, that there was a seam there. So this stuff is great. Water soluble. It's workable. Um, I need to touch that up a little bit in there. It's still a little wide, but I'll do that on my own time. Uh, this plastic putty is great. I recently ordered some Tamiya plastic putty because this bottle's getting a little tired, but I've had this thing for years, um, and it's it's a great product. So uh, Tamiya plastic, or excuse me, Vallejo plastic putty. I'll let you know how the Tamiya plastic putty works out, but I'm expecting good things because Tamiya is a really good company. So um, that stuff's great for gap filling. That is my go-to. And then this is just poster tack um, for blue tack for putting, um, you know, posters on the wall when you were a kid. Um, I use this for maybe a little bit of masking. Not often, though. I don't really like masking with this stuff. What I do use it for is I'll use it for, um, you know, just putting, a, you know, a couple heads on, you know, paint pot or something if I need to have a little holder um, I'll put them on paint pot or I'll put them on bases. Um, if I'm converting something or kit bashing something and I want to see how it's going to look, I'll just break off a little piece, you know, put it, you know, if I was thinking of attaching, a, you know, a bolt to this guy's back or something, I wouldn't. But, um, you know, I could just put a piece of blue tack there or a piece of poster tack there, put it on and just kind of see how it looks. 
and then it doesn't affect you know the underlying um, it doesn't affect the underlying surface so it's not going to leave a residue or anything um, and then here I have uh, to me a masking tape and this stuff is worth the weight worth its weight in gold um, for masking for paint this is my go-to it's worth the extra money to not have stuff peel um, I absolutely absolutely swear by this stuff so Spend the extra money to get the Tamiya tape. I've had too many bad experiences with, um, you know, painter's tape, or frog tape, or masking tape, or, you know, all these different kinds of tape. I just go with the best, which is Tamiya. And real quick, I'll run through this tray of different products so glue i use this uh max secure extra thick and it has a little bit of a working time it gap fills a little bit um it's kind of like a gel this stuff is great um if i need to harden cork on basing i use uh, super thin glue this stuff is crazy um it just absolutely flows kind of in water for airbrush primer, I use Style and Lens from Badger. Um, it's really, really good. I also use Vallejo um, for if I, my red primer is Vallejo, the red brown. Uh, but Style and Lens for black and white and gray. Grays around. Here. Um, P3 Thamar Black. This is I don't use a lot of P3, but I use this for uh, my base rims because it's a really nice soft black. Absolutely have to have. Micro set and micro sole for doing transfers. These are 100% necessary. And then for liquid masking, I use Mr. Hobby Masking Sole Neo. I really like the Mr. Hobby. It's the same, it's, you know, by and large, this is all the same stuff. But this comes in a, in a nail polish bottle with a little applicator, uh, which is really helpful. And I just like Mr. Hobby products. I think they're super clean. I think they're really good. Um, so I use that for my liquid mask. Um, Artist White Spirit for doing oil washes and pigment washes. A uh, little zip kicker. Accelerator. For when I really need something to adhere very fast. Um, Vallejo Thinner, I hardly ever use this at all. Um, varnishes, I use Liquitex Gloss. You can get this at the craft store. This stuff is great through an airbrush. I use AK Satin. This stuff is phenomenal. This is absolutely my favorite. I still need to get some of their Ultra Matte, but, you know, one day. And then I use uh, a Vallejo Acrylic Matte Varnish through the airbrush, and I use a lot. That's why I ordered this gigantic. I actually didn't know it was going to be this big. I thought it was the smaller size, but I'll use it. Um, this is my go-to matte varnish. Um, it's super reliable. It works through the airbrush. Uh, the exceptions to me using acrylic thinner are AK and Scale 75. Um, I've just found that their branded thinners work better with their paints. And they absolutely need them. So uh, water doesn't, 99% of the time I thin paint with water, but for AK and for scale 75, um, I will use their thinner to thin their paints for the airbrush uh, because it just, it just works better. So that is a tour of my hobby products and hobby, um, Kind of accoutrement. Hope that was informative. Let's see, I don't leave that there. So I just keep them all in this big tray and I keep it under the desk and kind of I can grab a lot of it just by feel, but sometimes you know I'll just have to pull out the tray and come on. See, I took all this stuff out and now none of it's going to fit back in the, in the right way again. So I hope that was informative. Um, yeah, next time maybe we'll go through just different paints and paint products and brushes and 
Oh, before I forget, um, so this is what I use for brushes, and these are kind of old, oops, let's see, zoom out a little bit. Uh, these are kind of old, junky, these are in the texture and dry brushing and terrain section. These are the brushes over here that are actually still good, that have a nice point. But what I wanted to show you, these are old airbrush needles um, that bent because like, I hit my airbrush on the table or whatever. Uh, these are fantastic. Hold on to these. I use these for everything, for poking dropper bottles or, um, you know, weathering or, I mean, I use these all the time. So don't throw those out. Keep those. You never know when you might need just a sharp pointed something to to use to clear a clear a jam or something so um so yeah that was my final tip thank you for tuning in hope that was informative uh, if you have any questions or um you know you need a link to something uh just let me know and i'll be happy to post one of the comments um and you know next we'll uh we'll get back to painting some miniatures uh, but again this was requested by uh, more than a few people so hope you found it interesting and uh we'll see you soon thanks